Shooting steel targets this week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by MDT. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out MDTTAC.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday our question comes from Hedden, and Hedden asks, do's and don'ts regarding safety on steel targets. Um, this is a really great question because I shoot a lot of steel targets. Uh, paper gets really boring if you're not um, just zeroing for that very precise zero uh, or if you're not uh, shooting for groups. Um, outside of that, most of what I shoot is steel. I really, really enjoy steel with rim fire because you get that reactive target, you get it moving. Uh, I enjoy steel in competition because you don't have to go out and paste things. Um, you go out and just blast it with uh, a little bit of spray paint and then you're on to the next one. But there are some things that we need to keep in mind when we're shooting steel targets to be able to do so safely. Now, if you go out on the internet, there is all kinds of different disclaimers and do's and don'ts and things that you should and shouldn't do on steel targets. Uh, I've been shooting them for quite some time now, and I've seen uh, some really weird things happen, uh, but... I've pretty much come up with my personal guidelines that I use to keep myself safe. Now, the normal disclaimers do apply if you are using a steel target from any particular manufacturer. You're always going to be safest using their recommendations on how to use their targets. Uh, most of the time, though, those recommendations have been approved by their legal team, so the lawyers have signed off on them. Uh, so the lawyers generally try to go overboard on the safety side of things. Uh, however, if you decide to disregard those and do something different, that is at your own risk. Uh, so definitely, definitely be smart about shooting steel. Uh, now, first and foremost, um, eye protection really, really is important when you're shooting steel. I know a lot of times uh, you'll see precision rifle matches where we're not wearing eye pro. Uh, that is generally because we are shooting uh, beyond 100 yards, and the chances of things coming back from the steel at that distance is almost zero. Uh, when we are shooting uh, close range steel, um, 100 yards and in, you really, really need to make sure you're wearing eye protection. Uh, even running and gunning with carbines where we don't have uh, really precise target placements and engagement lines, uh, then I make sure that I'm wearing eye pro. And the condition of the targets uh, really has a big uh, factor on that, so we'll talk about that here shortly. So first of all, let's talk about steel target construction. So the target that I have in front of me here, uh, this is from Best Steel Targets, and this is AR500 steel plate. Uh, so this steel is specifically designed to be abrasion resistant uh, and it works very well for rifle caliber targets. Uh, now this target specifically, um, I use this mostly for handgun uh, because I like to keep my targets that I'm going to have close up uh, as clean as possible. Once we start shooting these with rifles, they'll get a little pop marked, and I'll talk about that uh, shortly. Um, but AR500 steel targets uh, and AR550, which is a little bit uh, higher grade steel, is really my preference uh, for steel targets because I don't have to worry about just using this uh, with handgun. If I decide to go out and shoot with uh, rifle as well, uh, this target will stand up to it. I won't punch holes through it. Uh, now, as I said, I tend to like to try to keep them a little bit separate if I have exclusive training targets. Uh, I have three of these exact same targets, uh, so when I'm setting out things and doing um, El Presidente's or bill drills or things like that, uh, then I can set these out and have some uh, distance between the shots so I have to actually swing and transition. Uh, 
but they tend to be relatively close range. Uh, you can shoot AR-500 out to uh, seven yards or into seven yards uh, with handgun and be relatively safe. As long as the face is clean like this, you don't have pop marks and uh, all kinds of uh, nastiness on them, uh, then when the bullet hits, the splash comes off pretty much parallel with the strike face of the target. Uh, when we shoot these, uh, after doing a training session, you can actually look down on the ground and there will be a line cut in the ground at the bottom of the target uh, where all that spall, that splash from the bullet has gone down into it. You get very little forward, and I can actually set cameras in front of the target recording, and the cameras will rarely ever get any uh, splash on them at all. Uh, you just don't want to have anything that is right on the edges of the targets because uh, the spall will come off sideways, and if you have something over here, it can deflect it and then send it back at you. Uh, so if you're creating an array of targets, you want to keep that in mind and try to stagger them uh, so if the next target isn't right on line here, that it's farther back. Uh, that way the spray from this one is not going to hit the other one and deflect off. Uh, so little things like that you want to keep in mind. But if the target is clean, you can shoot it with handgun up to seven yards. Uh, when we shoot Steel Challenge, a lot of the Steel Challenge sanctioned stages, uh, the closest target is about seven yards, about 21 feet away. Uh, so that, again, Nice, clean targets, you're fine. When they start getting beaded up and pitted, and uh, if you are not using AR-500, if you're using a milder steel for handgun-only targets, uh, then you will start to get some splash back off them. Now, when we are shooting rifle, Almost all steel target manufacturers will recommend that you do not shoot steel targets with rifles closer than 100 yards. Uh, if you are shooting steel targets with rifles, the, the steel target needs to be at least AR-500. Uh, way back in the day, uh, before I had the cash to actually buy these targets, I went to a local machine shop and I uh, tried to find out if they had any AR-500 scrap or any... because. Uh, it comes in huge plates. I didn't need a whole plate. I just wanted one piece to shoot. They didn't have any AR-500 scrap, but they had, I believe it was AR-400. Uh, so I thought, ah, oh, okay, you know, that's only 100 difference, so I should be okay. And I got a piece of this uh, AR-400 and uh, went out, set it out a couple hundred yards away, shot it with a 308, and the bullets went right through it. Um, I mean, they didn't even wave on the way through. They just trucked right on through the target. Uh, so don't goof around with that. AR-500 really is the minimum uh, for engagements of rifles. Now, when we are talking about shooting rifles on steel, there's a really interesting thing that occurs. Uh, the reason that we can shoot lower grade steel with handguns is because handgun bullets are slower and they have a good deal of mass. Uh, speed is what kills steel, the velocity of the bullet, uh, because you are putting a ton of force into a very, very small space. Um, larger round nose uh, handgun projectiles tend to flatten out and splatter off target. Uh, rifle rounds tend to pretty much vaporize when they hit the target. Uh, they flow, they turn into a liquid, and the heat um, is incredible uh, where the bullet actually hits on the target. The higher the velocity, the more heat you get on that, and you can actually start uh, melting out little uh, craters in the actual steel strike face uh, when you're shooting very high velocity rifle rounds uh, very close. So you need to go 100 yards and beyond for a couple of reasons. One is the velocity is dropping off when you go greater distances. Uh, and then also you're creating more safety room between you and the target. So any spall that does come off the target, any splash that comes off the target uh, is gonna have time to lose velocity before it gets to you. The same thing with uh, shooting handgun targets. When you go out to the target line, you look, uh, there will be a groove cut in the ground underneath it. And with rifle targets, it tends to be a fairly deep, fairly nasty groove. Um, we have had situations where um, birds or wildlife or whatever has uh, ended up at the bottom of a target uh, when it's hit, and um, it kills it pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, you really want to be careful about how you array targets. Uh, you definitely want to have targets arrayed so that they are perpendicular to the firing point. Um, 
By that, I mean that if the camera is the firing point, we want to set the target uh, this way so that the axis is perfectly sideways uh, to the target. So when it hits, the splash is going to come right off uh, top and bottom as well uh, to the line of fire. We don't really want to start angling them this way because when we angle the target this way, now Again, we're still getting that spall going off this direction. Uh, more of it is going to glance off and come this direction, less going back that direction. Um, so we start to run the risk of sending uh, chunks of bullet material uh, back in directions that we didn't plan. So best practice is uh, to set it so that it's pretty much square to the firing line. Now. As I said, most target manufacturers will recommend 100 yards and beyond for uh, AR-500 steel targets when engaging them with rifles. Uh, you can shoot them closer than that, but two things are going to happen. Uh, one is you are going to damage your target much more. You're going to wear it out much, much quicker. Uh, each shot is going to cause a greater crater in that target. And as those craters get deeper and deeper, they are going to send more material back towards you. Now, since you're closer, that material is going to come back to your position with greater speed and it does have the ability to cause injury. Uh, we'll see on uh, handgun steel, uh, once it starts to get beat up to a certain degree, uh, you will get more, uh, it's mainly the copper jacket that ends up coming back off of jacketed bullets uh, and it will come back quick enough that it can uh, cut exposed skin. Now, if it hits your clothing, uh, it's generally not a problem. Very rarely do I see a chunk come back fast enough uh, to actually uh, go through clothing and harm you. Uh, usually if you start seeing that, it, a target has been beat up well beyond when it should have been pulled out of service. But a uh, rifle damages the targets much quicker the closer that you are. So once you start to see those little uh, pot marks on the target, uh, you need to either flip the target because uh, targets like this, like this best target here, I've got bolts uh, so I can just take these carriage bolts out, turn the target 180 degrees so the bracket goes on the face that's all beat up and then I have a clean face back to the target. Uh, this will also help uh, prevent the targets from curving. So again, handgun targets, uh, it takes a lot before they start to curve. Uh, my primary rifle targets, like I have a defense targets uh, target here um, that I shoot a lot with rifle. It's uh, pretty much primarily a rifle target, uh, and that has a pretty severe curve on it, and the front is uh, beaten up pretty well, so it's actually time for me to flip that target. Um, but once you flip it, now you have a clean strike face, you're basically starting fresh, and then hitting the target over time will start to bring that curve back out of it, and you'll get a little bit more life before you need to go ahead and discard the target. Now, when we switch over and we start talking about precision rifle targets, uh, precision rifle targets, you can get a lot more life out of them because we are usually shooting larger steel targets and we are shooting them at greater distances. So again, we've got that great velocity drop off before we actually hit the target. Uh, so it is relatively safe, but again, uh, the damage to the targets uh, is going to dictate how much material gets thrown back towards you. And once you start getting them really uh, tore up, uh, you lose the predictability of where that stuff is going to go. So uh, it doesn't matter which way you're angling targets. There are so many different angles on the strike face when they get chewed up. Uh, the material is going to go in all different directions. So be really careful about that. Now, bullet construction is another thing that we get into. Um, when you're shooting steel targets, you really should only be using uh, either lead core or jacketed lead core bullets. Um, traditional ideology is that uh, steel jacketed bullets like you find with a lot of AK ammo is a bad idea. And uh, M855 or green tip 5.56 ammo is also a bad idea. So with AK ammo, a lot of the cheaper stuff and even getting into some of the AR ammo, some of the steel cased AR ammo, uh, the jacket is not a true copper jacket. What the jacket is, is a steel jacket around a lead core uh, with copper plating or copper washing on the outside of the jacket. So it looks copper, but it's actually steel inside there. Uh, now we've talked before about uh, it wears out rifle barrels a whole lot quicker, uh, but for what we're worried about here, 
is it imparts a whole lot more energy. It's a whole lot more resistant to falling apart when it hits the steel. So it's gonna cause a little bit more damage to your steel target. But those jackets are also less malleable, so it's more likely that you're going to have uh, razor-sharp pieces of jacket come back at you. So be really careful shooting steel targets with steel jacketed ammunition. Now, when we talk about M855, M855 was actually designed to pierce steel helmets at 300 meters. Uh, that was the whole reason for this ammo. Uh, it has a lead core, but at the tip of that lead core, it has a tungsten steel penetrator looks like a little triangle, a little cone uh, right at the tip of that. And then the copper jacket goes over all of that. Uh, so when you fire that into a steel target, um, the copper peels back very quickly and that tungsten steel penetrator hits your target. And then you have the weight of the lead bullet pushing behind it. Now, there is an argument, and I have not actually tested this yet, so I want to make sure I make that disclaimer. I plan on doing this relatively soon, uh, but there's an argument that M855, it's a 62 grain bullet with a steel penetrator, and it actually causes less damage to steel than 193, which is a 55 grain uh, lead core copper jacketed bullet that has no penetrator in it. Uh, the uh, 55 grain, the argument is that when it hits, uh, because of the construction of the bullet, uh, you get all that material that flows into the target and actually creates greater pressure at that impact point on armor plate uh, than you get with the tungsten steel penetrator that hits because the steel penetrator hits, comes to a full stop, and then the jacket flows into the back of the penetrator, not into the back of the target. And then, of course, the penetrator and the remainder of the bullet uh, come off of the target when it's done. Now, there is a possibility, again, when you start getting pop marks, that when you hit it with that M855, that that tungsten penetrator can come back off the target. Uh, these things do rebound. It It is like a piece of spring steel. Now, obviously not to that extreme, um, but there are harmonics, there are vibrations, so you can get things that rebound off the target. Uh, and because the steel penetrator is going to stay together, it's not going to splatter, it's not going to fall apart, uh, there's a possibility of that coming off. So you run the risk of damaging the target, although the jury's still out on that. Um, the science behind it is sound, but I haven't actually gone out and tested it. Shot a group in one area on a target with a steel penetrator and shot a group in another area uh, with the regular M855, or I'm sorry, 193 and 193. Um, I plan on doing it soon. I've started to get some targets uh, that are getting near the end of their life. Uh, so I'm going to try to find a clean spot on them and try that. Uh, but for safety's sake, uh, just avoid doing that. There's not really any good reason for it. Uh, I have, because of our ammo shortage here lately, I have a lot of M855 that I've come across and I couldn't pass it up because of the price. Uh, I just keep that separate in M855. I shoot on paper at extreme close range. Uh, and then I use the 193 uh, for shooting steel uh, when I'm training with the carbines. Um, with precision rifle, there really shouldn't be any reason that you're shooting any kind of uh, armor piercing or armor penetrating uh, cartridges on this. Uh, if, if you've got some API that you found somewhere, something of that nature, don't, don't shoot it at steel. Um, that's a, a really bad deal. Uh, so stay away from armor piercing. Stay with regular copper jacketed um, lead core bullets. I would say even try to stay away from uh, shooting steel with any uh, solid copper monolithic bullets. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the remainder of that bullet is going to react. Usually they are designed for the front end of the bullet to expand, uh, but you generally have a good deal of weight in the tail end of that bullet. Um, and again, when we get spall that comes back, it's usually copper jacket that comes back. So I'm not sure how that copper base uh, would react to impacting the target. So other than that, um, it's just common sense. Don't put steel targets next to something that you don't want hit by splash or hit by spall. Um, plan on having to replace uh, two by fours. Uh, a lot of these, like the best targets, um, they stand relatively upright, so the spall goes straight down to the ground, and you don't get a ton back into your 2x4s. Uh, if you have targets that have a lean to them, so if when you set them up on the 2x4, uh, they lean like this, 
uh, then you are going to get a lot of that spall that are going to come back into your 2x4s and you may want to consider um, either just keeping a lot of spare 2x4s around uh, or going to a uh, replacement uh, steel leg or steel uh, post that you're gonna hang them on. Uh, usually when we hang precision rifle targets, we're hang hanging them on T-posts, and the T-posts last a long time. They don't get damaged by the spall, they get damaged by misses uh, that pierce the T-post. Uh, with two by fours, uh, two by fours absorb misses fairly well, uh, especially when you're running them like this, where the wide end of the two by four is facing the shooter. Uh, you can put quite a few bullets through them, even with uh, 45s, uh, before you completely destroy the two by four. Um, but the spall uh, will cut through them just like a buzz saw. Uh, we've got uh, again one of the defense targets. Um, defense targets are great because the way they hang, they ring really loudly when you hit them. It's absolutely fantastic. It's really no question when you've hit the target. Uh, but that spall comes back at an angle and uh, will start to cut big chunks out of the 2x4 uh, as you go. Now, you'll get several shooting sessions, but if I was running a class with those targets, uh, I would make sure I had some spare 2x4s to be able to swap them out. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about close range rifle shooting with steel. Uh, again, I said it's generally recommended that you do 100 yards and out with rifle on steel, but I do actually have one target. It is a AR-550 or AR-600 target, um, and it is designed specifically to be a close range, a 50 yard steel target, and it has a very extreme lean to the front of it, uh, so it's supposed to direct most of that spall down to the ground, um, and then also um, it's just a heavier duty material, so it's going to survive uh, those impacts a whole lot longer. Now, I have talked to various different steel target manufacturers about hanging targets at an angle, uh, and different manufacturers have different opinions on it. Uh, best targets, uh, their targets are generally perpendicular to the firing line. Uh, they're straight up and down. Um, several other manufacturers will put a forward lean on the targets. And what I seem to have experienced shooting is that uh, the closer targets they are, the more you need that lean into them to avoid some of that spall coming back. And I think some of that is uh, what is coming off the top of the target, um, but some of it I think is just due to once these targets get a little bit chewed up, having that face aiming a little bit closer to the ground helps limit that stuff coming back. Uh, but when you put a box around the target and then you shoot it, uh, really that spall is coming off and it'll pierce the cardboard of the box around it at a right angle to the direction of fire. So there is a lot of question on that aspect of it. I would say don't worry about uh, leaning them or standing them straight upright. Uh, again, today I was shooting these at uh, seven yards, all standing upright with handgun, and I didn't get any small at all come back because the face on these targets is clean. Um, if they get chewed up, uh, it will probably make a little bit more of a difference, but again, then you're flirting with disaster. Get the targets out of there to begin with. Buy from a known manufacturer. Be careful about buying steel targets off of eBay or Amazon unless you know where they're coming from because um, it would be very easy for an unscrupulous manufacturer to swap this out with mild steel and you wouldn't know it until you put rounds through it or you start uh, really chewing it up with handgun and start kicking stuff back. Uh, we have uh, gongs, well we had, most of them have been replaced now. We had gongs out at our local range that were mild steel uh, at the more extended distances and they caused no end of problems. Uh, they were really, really thick targets, uh, so that meant they were really, really heavy targets, but the face of them looked like the, the face of the moon. It was just so cratered, it was horrible. Um, and they would leave them up there for a considerable amount of time. Now they tried to lean them a little bit so that the, uh, the spall would go down at the ground. Uh, but again, shooting AK, I had a round come back off of them at pretty good velocity at that distance uh, and learned not to shoot AK rounds at chewed up 
mild steel targets. Uh, that was really early on in my shooting education. Uh, thankfully, we've been able to get rid of those targets. All the targets that are hung at our local range for the rifle range are all AR-500 steel targets. Uh, so we've eliminated that. The targets do still get beat up, and occasionally you st will still have somebody come out and try to shoot them with armor-piercing ammo. Um, don't do that. Don't be that guy. Uh, do not shoot armor-piercing at steel targets, especially if they're not your targets. Now, one last thing that I will discuss is uh, targets for 22s, because that is where you do see a lot of mild steel targets. Uh, AR-500 is a little bit more expensive, so unless you're getting targets from a manufacturer that already cuts a lot of AR-500, they are more than likely mild steel targets. Uh, they are not interchangeable with rifle or uh, even sometimes center fire handgun unless they're really thick targets. Uh, you'll crack them, you'll bend them, you'll do all kinds of ugly stuff. Uh, so try to keep the 22 targets separate uh, from the other rifle or handgun. As I said, for me, for handgun, although I could go with the lower grade steel for handgun, I tend to try to stick with AR-500 anytime I get handgun targets because what I would use for a smaller, closer range handgun target, I can use for a longer range rifle target uh, and get double duty out of my steel. So that's just what I do. Um, I still do, as I said, try to keep a couple of targets that I use exclusively for handgun. It just makes it more enjoyable for me, less splash coming back. And it means that when I'm shooting carbine, I don't have to worry about uh, keeping the target pristine. Um, I can tear it up. Uh, finally, whatever target you put out, whatever hanging system, um, bring spare bolts with you or spare hangers uh, because inevitably the bolts will get shot out of targets or the hangers will get broken. An errant round will hit it and uh, break off the hook. I've used targets that have AR-500 hooks that come through them that the target hangs on. Uh, those tend to last really well. Uh, they last really well. I have used targets that have holes in them and they have a AR-500 hook that comes through. Uh, those tend to survive uh, impacts pretty well. Um, I've got a lot of handgun targets that just have carriage bolts on them and the carriage bolts will survive um, most impacts. Uh, and when we start using carriage bolts with um, intermediate range rifle targets, uh, have a tendency to blow the bolt heads off uh, after a good amount of time hitting them, especially when they're um, in areas like they are on this target uh, where we've got these carriage bolts right up here. Uh, it's very easy to drift from a high center tar hit to a center carriage bolt hit and blow that guy off. And it doesn't have to hit dead center of the carriage bolt. It can hit on the side and shear the head off. Uh, and then you've lost that bolt and your target goes flopping around. So uh, if you are shooting them on your own, just make sure you throw a couple of extra bolts, a uh, couple of wrenches in the car. Uh, if you are using targets for a match, definitely, definitely have uh, spare hangers, spare bolts. Uh, it's usually best just to have a whole spare target that you can run out and hang uh, because they will get shot off their hangers or shot off their posts. Uh, that's just a fact of life. I think it's, it's rare that I have been to a rifle match that has gone the entire match without a target failure. Uh, so when the targets fail, it is usually the bolts or the hanger uh, that fail, not the actual strike face of the target itself. So that's going to do it for steel targets, my recommendations, and my experience. But as always, I want to hear what you guys have to say. So let me know what your experience with steel targets is. Drop it down below in the comment section or send it over to us on Facebook or Twitter. And as always, if you have questions about any of the content that we covered on this show, please drop me a question down below or send it over there. If you guys like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and click that little bell icon to be notified when we release new content. And if you want to help support the content that you know and love, check us out over on Patreon. And until next time, get out and shoot!